Good morning, Modern Steaders. This morning we're doing a video on what our favorite homestead animal is and why. And this is going to be a video series we're doing with Arms Family Homestead, Keeping It Dutch, and Homesteady. I'm going to put a link here with a playlist of all of our videos. And I'm going to put a link in the description down below to all of their channels. They're all great homestead channels. They're all great people. We're friends with all of them. Go check them out. And we all have different animals that we believe are the best homestead animal. So it's going to be fun to see which animal we all like and why we choose it. Let's get started. You might be surprised. We got the driveway and the road sanded. Good thing. It's pretty slippery out. We're supposed to get more rain this week, so not going to make it any better. Good morning. If you're new to our channel, our roosters are very vocal here at Lumna Acres. Even when we have a full moon, you'll hear them crowing at 11 o'clock at night. <coughs> yes, Mr. Biggs. Don't tell the chickens, but they're not. But they're not my number one homestead animal. Shh. We don't want to hurt their feelings. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my chickens, but they're just not my favorite homestead animal. My, my favorite homestead animal is our pigs. Now there's a few reasons I really enjoy my pigs. I can set them up with an automatic feeder pretty easy. Let them have a constant supply of food. And I gotta fill it up a couple of times a week. But it's not something I gotta do every day. I'm out here every day watering them a couple of times a day. Our pigs, or any pigs in that matter, are fun to watch. They're almost like, I don't know, we're just, we get a thrill out of watching them. Our pigs run around on pasture most of the time. They're always frolicking, having fun. They're easygoing, smart. I know that a pig's gonna take me six months to raise for meat. So I'll go, okay, it's gonna take me six months to raise for meat. That's right around 20 bags of feed per pig. So if we're raising two pigs, we're going to need a ton of feed. I can buy that at the beginning of the season. And if I buy all my feed at once, I get a really good discount. I We store in our basement, so I'll buy a ton of grain. I'll save $1 to $2 per bag, store it in the basement. I know how they're doing throughout the season and how close they are becoming to harvesting time by how much food we're having. And if I think they're not growing and they're eating a lot of feed because I know what I'm going through, I'll go, might be an issue. They might have worms, they might have X, Y, Z. Let's look into it because their feed isn't doing what it should be doing. We keep our pigs in pasture, in the woods, whatever. We like to keep them in a big area. And we use them and utilize them to work for us. So that's another great reason we love having our pigs is this was all brush. The pigs through springtime came in here, ate it all up, they turned it back into a, it's going to be an awesome orchard. And then they also fertilized it. And they were able to take all of the apples that we couldn't use this year and convert them into bacon. 
The other thing you can do with your pigs, depending on the time of the year you get them, if you get piglets in the spring and you have compost piles that you need turned for you, you stick them in with the pigs and let the pigs do all the work for you. They'll turn all that compost, they'll aerate it. They have a nose on them that is like a plow, a digger. It is amazing what they can do with that thing. Huh, yeah, it's amazing what you can dig with that. So you can buy an animal that you're raising for food, make him do work for you, so you're gonna get food out of it, you're gonna get work out of it. So it's they're paying for themselves in so many ways that it's less work you need to do. And while they're digging and aerating the compost, your soil, they're getting feed out of it. So it means less food you gotta feed them. The manure you get from the pigs turns into awesome compost and I have found that it grows amazing squash and pumpkins. It's funny how different animals manures grow different plants better. For me it's a joy to come out and feed our animals, especially the pigs. They just put a smile on my face. They're always just acting, I don't know, they're always just doing something fun and it just makes me want to come out and take care of them especially in our long winter months. We're saving the best for last. There's three or four reasons here, but they kind of all coincide with each other. A pig, you can get so many different kinds of meat out of it. Most animals that you're raising for meat, you're gonna get like a chop and a roast and stuff like that. Pigs, you're gonna get roasts, you're gonna get pork chops, you're gonna get sausage, you're gonna get hams, and you're gonna get bacon. There's so many different kinds of food that you can get from a pig, it's not even funny. It's so versatile. You can get Canadian bacon. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. You get the fat from pigs to turn into lard, which you can cook with, you can bake with, you can turn it into making soaps. I mean, it's just endless. You can make hot dogs from pigs and bacon. To me, there's just no other better reason right there. Bacon and hot dogs. Hands down, boom, it's a winner. We don't need to raise any other animal other than chicken so we can have eggs to go with our bacon. Right? You guys make like the most delicious food. I know, you don't wanna hear that. <laughs> Pigs are a good sized animal, they're a lot bigger than a chicken, but they're a lot easier and cleaner to harvest and butcher yourself. I would much rather harvest pigs than chickens, believe it or not. Yes, they're a bigger animal, but they're not big like a cow, so they're more manageable. If you have two people doing it, you can do it easily, comfortably, and have fun. And you just get so much beautiful, delicious food. I know I keep going back to the food and talking about how delicious it is, but that's the whole reason why we modern homestead. We're doing this to provide our family with the best food possible. So for us, it's all about the food. For you, you might have a different reason, but we raise our own pigs for the food, our own animals for the food. And the pigs are one of the best animals to be raising for that. You get so much out of them. Another great thing about pigs is if you don't want to be tied to your homestead or if you only want to have animals a little while throughout the year, pigs you'll be raising for six months. After you've had them for six months, you can either harvest them yourself, you can bring them to a local butcher, and they'll harvest them and process them and package all the meat for you, and then you're done with them. They're still not on the homestead. Come next spring, you can get piglets again and start it all over again. If you're getting into homesteading, a pig's a great place to start because you're only gonna have them on the homestead for six months. And then you're gonna get bacon. I have a, I have a funny story to share with you. The jacket that I wore in this morning's part of the video, now, let me put it in context. This is after I've been to work all day. Coming home, we're gonna make some soup. But the jacket I wore this morning in the video and the jacket I wore yesterday, I wore to work today. It is a fishing jacket. It's a Bass Pro Shop dry as a bone jacket. It's an awesome jacket. It was raining yesterday. It's been wet, stuff's starting to melt here. 
I do construction, I'm building a home. We're still doing a lot of outdoor work. It's windy, wet, so I made sure I wore it today. I was getting dripped on. I was working under the eaves, installing a porch decking. I was getting dripped on wet, so I was glad I had my raincoat. The funny part was we had the heaters out to stay warm and to warm up in front of. I'd go over, I'd warm up. If I was standing by one working, I'm like, I smell like I've been out fishing. That jacket never hasn't been washed and I don't know how long, it still smells like a fishing trip. So I just thought that was funny. I need to wash that jacket. The guys at work were kind of looking at me like, why are you wearing a brand new coat? I'm like, it's not a new coat. I've had this coat for five or six years. It's my fishing coat. And after sitting in front of the heater, they knew it was a fishing coat. So I just thought you'd like to hear that story. But right now, we're gonna work on making some chicken noodle soup. I guess it's not chicken noodle soup. We're gonna make a chicken and barley soup. That's been our go-to soup this year is barley. We've been doing a lot of barley soups with pork. That's another great thing about pigs that's very underrated. Bone broth from pigs. If you butcher your own pig or if you send your pig out to get butchered, Make sure you keep the bones and try making some bone broth. It's delicious. It's better than chicken broth. I know, it's crazy, but it's delicious. That's one of the best things about whether it's a pig or a chicken. Is you have all the makings for your own bone broth. This has been, we've been making so many bone broths this winter and so many soups. It's not even funny, trying to keep us healthy with delicious soups. What I do is I, when I come home from work, before I, or after I feed the animals, but before I start editing our video, I will get dinner going. So that way, that way, whoa. That way while I'm editing the video, dinner can be cooking and we can have a good, wholesome meal. And soups have been Super easy for me this winter. Between working and videos, I can get one going and it's cooking and ready. So we'll make a few big meals throughout the week. The leftover chicken, the leftover pork. We'll save the meat and we'll use that for our soups. I'm gonna put some peas, broccoli, and corn in our soup. And I went and I got the bone broth. Ready? Look at this. This is awesome bone broth. Let me show you. Nice and fatty. That yellow fat is from being pasture raised. That's good. And then the broth is thick. It's like a gelatin. That's what you're looking for. I'm going to stick the Instant Pot on saute. And that's gonna start to warm up the broth. We'll do that while we chop all the veggies. Chopped up the onion the other day. Only needed half of it. So we'll use the other half today. I love Celery it just adds delicious flavor and it's good for you. So let's do four stocks. I am not a huge vegetable person or I just can't sit down and eat them. But the more I put in the soup, the more I love it and the better it is for me. So I eat it and eat more veggies this way and so do the kids. It's a good way to get veggies into kids. Olivia's been bringing it to school for lunches and I like that. Get two big cloves of garlic in there. Let's 
Now as busy as we get, I don't think there's anything better than we can do than to eat good, healthy, wholesome food. Sometimes when we're busy, some, you just don't feel like making the food and you don't want to deal with it sometimes, but I think that's when you need to because when you're busy and you got a lot of stuff going on, I don't want to be going to the doctors either, so. Best part is too, the pigs get to enjoy all of this food that, whether it's the leftovers, the scraps here that we're not eating, they're not waste, the pigs will eat it all. Do a whole bag of corn. Do a whole bag of broccoli. Half a bag of peas. A lot of times when we are making our soups, we don't have a lot of meat to go in them because it's leftovers. And we've eaten most of it in the meal. But we flavor it, the meat gives it flavor, and so delicious. We're lucky enough to have an awesome food co-op that we grocery shop at and are able to get most everything bulk if we want to. So we'll get a big bulk bag of barley. Oh, it's gonna be a big pot of deliciousness. Well, since the soup is fresh out of the Instant Pot, better put it in some bowls and let it cool off. The real way we'll know if Olivia likes the soup or not is if she asks for it for lunch tomorrow. If she doesn't want it for lunch, that means she didn't like it. We'll find out. Shh. Ow! Zero! Daddy! Mm -hmm. You're gonna want some of the soup for lunch tomorrow? Mm hmm. You eat your stew today? Mm hmm. I told the people on the camera. We knew if you'd like it, if you'd want it for lunch. Because if you didn't want it for lunch, we knew you wouldn't like it. If you're new to our channel, now's a great time to subscribe. And while you're down there, ring the bell. That'll turn on notifications. And hopefully YouTube will let you know every time we upload a video, go live, or post something to the community tab. And if they don't, because they probably won't, you can go over to our website, alumnaacres.com, sign up for our newsletter, and also remember, we upload a video every day at 6 a.m. So we'll be right, we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. Mm -hmm.